Hello everyone, today we're going to be learning how to turn the shop that we made in our previous tutorial into an entity shop that supports custom checks, specific user groups, and um, functions that will be ran on the player specific to an item. Um, so before we begin, the first thing you want to do is make sure that you are caught up in your files and everything is the same from the previous tutorial. So if you're missing anything, if you watch the previous video, um, I believe part 17, you can get all the code that you see here. Just to recap how this works, um, we loop over every single item inside our tutorial shop. Each time the iteration goes around, K has a number between one and the maximum number of items in our shop. So right now we only have three shops. So K has the value between one and three. Um, if we go ahead and click on the first item in the iteration, it's gonna send one to the server. And you can see we read that here and then we get the item data based on the number that was sent. So if the player sends one, you can know that this is an SKS, two for M24 and three for Glock 20. Right now, what we're doing is we're checking to see if the player has a weapon by looking up the class name here that we've stored on the table. And um, if they don't have it, then we'll allow them to go further. If they can afford to buy the item, then they can. And then finally, what we do is we give them the item data dot class name. Um, if we go onto the wiki here, you can see that the give function takes a weapon class name, um, but you do note that the, all this function is meant for weapons slash pickables only, it is not restricted to weapons. So that means that any uh, entity can spawn using this function. So um, what we can do now, if we wanted to add support for entities, we could hop into Gary's mod. We could find the entity that we want. I'm going to be using the attachments here, um, and I want the 20 round magazine. So I'm going to copy this, which is the class name right there. I'm going to create a new entry into our table here. We'll call this SKS Mag 20. Um, and then we'll say this is a 20 round uh, magazine for SKS, but I'm pretty sure it's a clip. And we go ahead and save that now. And we go in game and we click purchase. You can see purchase success. It works, kind of. It's kind of wonky because it's using that give function, uh, which spawns the entity right at the feet, which is something that we do not want. So to fix the entity spawning at the feet, there's a few things that we can do here. Um, we can set a type on each entry and say, all right, if it's an entity, do this. If it's a weapon, do this. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to say, say item type equals um, weapon. And then we could go and take this and put it for every single weapon now. And then we could say item type for this one is equal to entity or some form of unique identifier. So we know that this, we're going to do something different for this here, while these will do their own thing. So we'll spawn the entity in front of the player. Um, if it's a weapon, then we're going to give it to the player. So what we can do now is we can say, all right, so we have this item data here now. So we can index by the item type. So with that in mind, we can say um, up here, could a variable say local is weapon equals item data dot, um, I believe it was item type uh, is equal to weapon. And then we can say local is ent equals item data dot item type is equal to entity. So now we can use these in our conditions here. So we could say if is weapon and they have the weapon, then um, we are going to say they already have this weapon. So we're only going to check to see as weapon if the item dot class name actually is like a weapon. Um, next thing you want to do is we only want to call the give function if it is a weapon. Otherwise, we want to do something else. So what I'm going to go do now is I'm going to say if is weapon. So if this is a weapon, then we're going to call the give function. And then we end it. And we can also do is say if is ent then, and we can run some custom code here. So for the entity, since we want them to spawn in front of the player, we're actually going to utilize util.traceline where we can pass in trace data and it'll return a position in the world based on um, the information that we've provided. So I'm going to head into here now. And since this is an entity, we're going to perform that trace. So I'm just going to create an empty table here called trace. Um, and this is where we're going to store all the information about our trace. So I'm just going to say trace.start and we're going to get the POI's I position. Then for the end pos, what we're going to want to do is we're going to take that starting position that we just wrote. And then we're going to uh, add the player's aim vector. 
and we can just multiply this by 85 to, um, sorry, 85 to essentially give it some distance that's going to be in front of the player. So it starts at their eyes. We're going to take their aim vector and multiply it by 85, which will basically create a forward. And then we're going to also add a filter, which can be an entity, and it, that's going to be the player that is actually doing the trace. Then we're going to say local tr equals util.traceline. So we're passing in this information here, the trace data, just like how it's being passed in here um, on the wiki, but instead of anonymously passing it into the function, we are just storing the data up here. I think it just looks a little bit nicer. Then what we can do now is we can call local um, item or int, int would work, uh, but we're just going to do item since it is something that they're buying. We'll do int.create. And now what we can do is we can pass in a class name here for this entity that we're trying to create. And it just so happens that we have item data that class name. So now that we have that, the next thing we want to do is go ahead and um, set the position of where this is going to spawn. And that is going to be tr.hitpos. So what we do is we pass in this trace here into util.traceline and we can get the trace.hitpos. If you want to look at what uh, util.traceline re returns based on the data that you pass in, here's all the information that you can index. Right now we're using the hit position, which is the position where the trace stopped. Um, so using the data we've provided here, this is going to stop somewhere in front of the player for the most part. And then the next thing we want to do is just go ahead and spawn in this item just like that. So now if I go ahead and save this, I head into game and let's open up our shop here and I hit purchase. You can now see there it is. Um, I'm going to press E on this. And now you can see we have the 20 round magazine just like that. So if I want to go ahead and add support for different entities now, I would just go ahead and find the entity that I want, copy to clipboard. And then I can go down here and go ahead and create another entry into the table here. And this time I'm going to pass in the class name there for the weapon shelf. Um, we'll just say weapon shelf and we'll say this is Dan's weapon shelf. Save that, hop in game, go into our tutorial shop and now you can see it's right there, purchase. Boom, now we have our weapon shelf, just like that. Um, but now what I wanna do is actually restrict this weapon shelf so that it is VIP only. And so what I can do now is I could say VIP equals true. Right now this will not do anything, but we're gonna add support for it. So this is just another thing that we can access on the item data. So what we can do now is we can say, if item data dot VIP, then end. So this is basically just saying if VIP is stored on here, meaning it is true, then this will execute. So what I'm going to just do now is I'm going to say um, POI chat print. This item is VIP only. And right now, this will not do anything other than just prevent us from buying the item. So if I go ahead and try to buy this now, it says this item is VIP only. If I purchase the SKS mag, it works just fine. Um, so now we have to kind of de define what VIP is. So what we can do is we can go ahead and create, for example, um, another entry into the tutorial shop um, table here. We can say tutorial shop dot um, VIP groups equals table. And then we could say, for example, VIP equals true. We could say founder equals true. And then super admin, admin, whatever, you know? Okay, I'm pretty sure I'm a super admin right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and set this to false, meaning that um, this will not count as a VIP group, even though it is still typed there. And now what I'm going to want to do is say, um, if the item data is VIP and we're going to say not, meaning this is not true. Um, we're going to look for, or sorry, attempt to index our VIP groups table by the player's user group. And I'll explain this in a sec. I know this is, can be a little bit confusing. But if I go ahead and save this, hop in, you see that this item is VIP only. And then if I go ahead and set this to true now, it should work. And you can see purchase success because I set super admin to true. To understand how this is working, basically it's the same thing as our items. We have a table full of items. We can send a number one through four to basically pull information on a certain item. We can do the same thing, but for user groups, if you can see that 
if we index VIP groups by VIP, it'll say true. If we index VIP groups by super admin, it'll say true. But if, for example, we try to index VIP groups by user, it'll either return nil or will it, it will return nil, which will essentially be the same thing as false. And that will uh, cause our chat print to go off and it'll stop executing the code. Um, so we're just looking up based on user group, trying to see if their user group is inside this table there. Um, so that will go ahead and make it kind of easy for us for our VIP equals true. Um, if we want to do, for example, a custom function, um, perhaps give a fake item um, on purchase, we could do something like this. We can create another entry here. And um, I can go ahead and just say item type equals, um, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll keep it as an entity. We'll actually just make this an entity and we'll have a callback function here. And so what the callback function is going to do is we're going to execute this function and we're going to pass the player into it and we can call things onto the player whenever they buy this item here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set the player's health to, um, I don't know, to 400. Okay. And then we're also going to give them something. Um, and the entity that we're going to give them will be, I don't know, like a comp M4. Okay, so now what we can do is we could say this is a comp M4 and 400 HP. Okay, so if I go ahead and head into the shop now and I go ahead and purchase, oh, this still has weapon shelf. Um, I go ahead and purchase the comp M4 and HP. You'll see that the comp M4 is there on the ground. However, our HP, nothing happened. It's still the same. So what we need to do is actually add support for this callback. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, if item data dot callback, then, so if callback does exist on the item data, we're gonna say item data dot callback, and then we're gonna call the function just like this. And then we need to pass in the player because if I call the function, uh, without passing in PLY. PLY will not exist in this um, scope here. So we need to pass in the player that's purchasing the item. So now if I go back into here and I go ahead, take take note of my health here, purchase, you now see that my health is set to 400. I could go ahead and now add a bunch of callbacks to every single item now, and it would have support for that. So um, that's basically just a way to spice up your shops here. So you can add supports for entities, um, health items, custom models, whatever you want. Um, now that you add support for callbacks, you can pretty much make these do whatever. And this is a really good way to um, get your shops going and make something pretty creative. So um, that'll wrap it up. If you guys have any questions, feel free to comment them down below. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, like the video. I appreciate it. I'll uh, see you guys later. Bye-bye.